Hi, so I wanted to share with you how you can turn essentially any PDF into a digital or interactive activity for your students. So we're starting at smallpdf.com, which takes a PDF and turns it into a JPEG file. And another option for you would be to just open the PDF and take a screenshot of each of the pages that you want to use. But if you were going to do an activity that has multiple pages and it would take you a long time to do a lot of screenshots, this is a little bit of a faster option. So I just wanted to demo this part for you. So I already have the PDF I want to use in my downloads and I'm just going to drop it right here and it's going to upload it. And you, you, it's, this is a freemium model where some things are free and some things you have to pay for. We just want to convert the entire page so the free option is great. Do, do, do. So now it's taking the PDF and it's turning those pages into image files for you. And then what we're going to do is we're going to insert that into another option for your students to interact with. So we now have all of the pages of this PDF in images. And you can see that they're like, right, you can download them individually or you can download them as a zip file. Um, but again, that's the paid option. This is the activity that I'm working with for the demo. And just so you know, if you're not familiar with the mazes, there's two different mazes included and two versions of each maze. So that's why you can see like one, two, and then an answer key, one, two, and then an answer key. These two are the same maze, but with slightly different instructions. I know it's kind of hard to see, um, but there's like not very many instructions here and there's a little bit more here. So we're going to do the more in-depth version for both of them. I'm just going to save it as what they suggest here and save. So now you can see it popped up in my downloads bar down here. And now we're going to go to our Google Drive and start a new Google Slides presentation. And you have two options for this. Option one is better for if um, if you just have a few pages that you're going to interact with. If you have like a lot to upload, I'll show you a little bit of a faster way to do it. So we're going to start by making this the size of a piece of paper. So we're going to go File, Page Setup, Custom. Uh, actually, this is a landscape. So we're going to go 11 by 8.5 inches. Okay, so now this is the size of a piece of paper. I'm going to get rid of the other stuff on here. And again, like I said, we have two options. So there's just two pages that I want the students to interact with. So since it's not very many, we could just right click on the slide, click change background, choose image, upload, and then just drag and drop that file that you had just saved from the small PDF website. Done. So now you can see, oh, this is the background. And why do you really want that to be the background? Because now the students can't <laughs> can't delete it, right? They can't do anything to it. So what I would have my students do to finish this is I would have them use this scribble tool and they can just find their way through the maze. And obviously that's not correct, but you get the idea, right? Or you could just have them do lines and the line tool is kind of nice because you can make it thicker. So it's really easy to see and you can change the color. There's the color. So you can make it be, I don't know, purple if you want to like, wow, that's really clear that this is where they want it to go. So your students can just insert lines on top. If you have more than one page or more than two pages, if you have like, I don't know, 10 or 15 and it would take you a really long time to go right click, change background, upload image and do all those steps here in the add ons menu. There's an add-on that's called Slides Toolbox. And if you don't have this add-on, you would just go to Get Add-ons and type in Slides Toolbox to search for it and add it. So we're gonna open this because I already have it. And what this tool lets you do is, I mean, it's got a lot of features. But the thing that I really like is that you can create slides from images. So you're going to say a single image because otherwise it will do like a whole bunch like pack images, stack images. We just want one image per slide and we want to set it as the page background because again, that's what makes it safe from the students like accidentally deleting it or moving it or, you know, messing it up somehow that would make it frustrating for them. So we're going to go ahead and click next and we're going to go to upload. And here's where you can add files from for your advice. So you can just drag them in or you could you know, click and open a whole folder. And again, this example only has two pages that I wanted to upload, but I've done this with 25 slides all at once and it's been like, boom, super fast. So there's this example. 
Now it's going to upload those images and it's going to put them as the background on the slide without me having to right click, change back, right, do all the steps. Doop, doop. So you can see now I've got both pages in. And again, the students will just add the things. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to make this one step further for your students, you could ahead of time insert the lines for them. So let's just do it a little bit of an example here. Like I would maybe make it thick and I would maybe make a color that's visually really easy for me to see. And the students could change that if they wanted to. And then I could, let's just kind of get an idea for how long this is. I would maybe make a couple, one line that's this way, one line that's this way, up and down, right? That's their, there's our vertical line. And then one line that is horizontal, not perfect, but close enough. And then we do have a few that go the other direction as well. So I'm just gonna take this and go right here like that, okay? So now I have whoop, the line options for each of the direction a student might draw on the maze. So if you wanted to, right, you could make the movable pieces ahead of time for your kids. And if I do something like this, then I just duplicate them a lot. <laughs> so they might need, right, more than one diagonal line or they might need more than one horizontal line. So I'll make a whole bunch of them. And if you can just see, I'm literally just highlighting them all, copying, pasting, and then putting it right back on top. Unfortunately, Google Slides does not have an infinite clone feature yet. Um, hopefully they'll work on that at some point in time. That might be really nice for us. But you can see I've just been copying, re-highlighting the whole thing. The reason why I re-highlight the whole thing is because it adds them all together. So now there are quite a few of these movable pieces. And I might add, Something like, let's do it in a shape. This where it says mm, size 20, make it a little bit bigger. Drag and drop the shapes to mark your answers. Might do something like that just to make this super clear for the kids. There are the instructions here. Um, but if you wanted to take it one step further, if you're adding these movable pieces, I would clarify what do you want your kids to do with the movable pieces. And then once you've done that, you could pop them over here. It's going to take a little while because there's a lot of them. There you go. And this same thing applies, right, with if you're doing a worksheet that has like short answer or fill in the blank or something like that. If you wanted to, you could insert the text boxes ahead of time and just say type here. Okay. Or you could just tell them in the instructions off to the side, you know, insert text box to answer. Many high schoolers would be able to do that on their own. Middle schoolers should be able to do that on their own. Um, I mean, any of your students, right? If you show them insert text box or just this T tool, they'll be able to figure that out. And that, that is kind of a quick way to take resources that you've used in the past and make them work in Google Classroom or work in Google Drive just through those three tools.